This podcast is sponsored by the Wilson Center, but it doesn't have to be. It could be sponsored by your firm. Just imagine it. A crescendo of electronic tango. Some love for your company and the enduring gratitude of our listeners. Interested? Reach out to us at lap at wilsoncenter.org. That's L-A-P at wilsoncenter.org. Welcome back to the Argentina Project podcast brought to you by the Wilson Center. I'm your host, Benjamin Gadan. And I'm your producer, Katie Hopkins. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by phone from Buenos Aires by Bloomberg reporter Patrick Gillespie. Benjamin and Patrick discuss Patrick's recent article on Argentina's collapsing real estate market, both the causes. Hint, you need U.S. dollars to buy houses in Buenos Aires, and those dollars are hard to come by. And the implications for Argentina's sputtering construction industry. On to our interview. Patrick, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Ben. You recently reported for Bloomberg on the collapsing real estate market in Argentina, principally in the capital, Buenos Aires, and the numbers were stunning. I wanted to know a bit of the factors at play. It seemed like um, much more than the economic downturn has been causing this collapse in sales. Yes, I, I think the the housing market to me seemed like this great example of both the economic downturn that Argentina is going through, the economic response from the current government, and some of the sort of structural weaknesses you know of the economy. You have homes that are priced in U.S. dollars in Argentina, but people can only access mortgages in Argentine pesos. Uh, the peso has lost about 70% of its value since from the beginning of 2018 to up till now, give or take. And that's made it almost nearly impossible for Argentines to think about taking out mortgages. And still, home sales are down by more than 50% this year. Uh, Overall, that's both mortgage-backed sales and total home sales. And it's really uh, become a factor of uncertainty about the economy, uncertainty about the economic policies that could come in place with the next Argentine government. And people simply can't get access to credit. Um, There's now the capital controls implemented by President Mauricio Macri's government. And those capital controls only allow people to buy up to $10,000 in U.S. dollar banknotes, which is, of course, too little of a sum, too small of a sum to complete any type of uh, real estate transaction. So the real estate market is really paralyzed right now by both the economic uncertainty, the kind of strange nature of, of its uh, its own nature of pricing homes in dollars, uh, but also only offering mortgages and pesos, and, and the economic downturn, the peso being weak, and Argentina having the highest interest rates in the world, which are hovering near 70% right now. Now, I thought, though, in places like Argentina, one moves assets to real estate as part of a flight for safety so that, in fact, all the tumult in Argentina right now, particularly surrounding this month's election, would have led at least, you know, wealthy Argentines, if not the upper middle class, to try to park some of their money in real estate. Has that not been a factor that has given at least some tailwinds to the real estate sector? Well, a lot of the middle class, upper middle class, and certainly the the wealthy in Argentina already have the vast majority of their savings either in dollars in Argentina or in dollars abroad. Um, One economist here in Argentina, Miguel Kegel, estimates that Argentines have about $350 billion in savings kept abroad. That's sort of a sign of all the economic trauma that Argentines have endured over the decades between capital controls, currency controls, um, you know, policies swinging from one side of the pendulum to the other. So the safe flight to real estate, uh, it is considered a one, one of the few safe bets in Argentina because the whole market is priced in U.S. dollars. Uh, but the fact that there's capital controls now really limits a lot of the appetite for uh, new home sales. Uh, because if you sell your home and you ob- obtain all these U.S. dollars from, from in cash from a, a person, you have to keep them either in the bank or in your house now. Uh, if you put them in the bank, uh, w- withdrawals are lo- unlimited, but uh, you can you can only send abroad ten thousand dollars a month. Um, I think the concern about real estate investment here and and the the current policy outlook is that it's not necessarily what the rules are right now, but there's fear that the next government, which could be led by Alberto Fernandez, uh, could 
you know, implement stronger, stricter currency or capital controls. We don't know yet, but that there's that real concern that he could, you know, turn up the notch a lot and make it a lot harder to take dollars out of the bank, uh, transfer dollars abroad, or to just simply, you know, exchange pesos for dollars. Um, so amid that uncertainty, I think that's really just put a clamp down on the housing market and, and anybody who, uh, in the middle class, upper class, who wanted a safe bet uh, for their dollars is is probably taking their dollars out of the bank. We're seeing, you know, daily withdrawals of the central bank's reserves now for over two months. Now, there's cascading effects when you see this kind of trauma in a real estate market. I'm particularly thinking of new home construction. You focused mostly on sales data, but did you do any digging into the construction sector and those impacts? I mean, overall, as part of now, what, our third of four years of recession in Argentina, we've seen steep declines in, in activity in the construction sector and in employment. And, you know, those are, are pretty, you know, high wage jobs in the Argentine economy. What's been the broader impact of this sales slump? Certainly, it's had an impact on on the construction industry. Um, we've seen the you know overall the headline construction figure down, both on a month over month scale and and annually now for for over a year. And and the numbers monthly waver. Sometimes they they bump up a little bit or bump down a little bit. But you're seeing on the annual basis some serious declines. And in the construction and manufacturing sectors, we've seen employment down, uh, jobs are down significantly. Significantly on a year-over-year basis, the annual declines are in the six digits, uh, over 100,000 in job losses. So I think there's some serious economic pain in terms of lost wages, lost jobs, and certainly a complete halt to home sales. Um, the real estate market is having a ripple effect here in the Argentine economy. And look, you've chosen to focus on the real estate sector because it's important both to construction and general economic activity. And because, as you've pointed out, it's illustrative of so many of the structural oddities in Argentina, including now capital controls, the dependence on the dollar, the depreciation of the peso. Um, It's also an important sector from a public policy standpoint. And if I'm not mistaken, earlier in Mauricio Macri's term, there had been policies implemented to increase accessibility for home ownership. And in fact, this was yet another, you know, economic priority of the Mauricio Macri, you know, economic liberalization project that seems now to have fallen on really hard times. Absolutely. Uh, Macri wanted to really turn around the housing market, and it became, uh, back in 2017, a sign of Argentina's overall economic turnaround that it was going to become this star in emerging markets, star in Latin America uh, economy. Uh, home sales boomed in 2017 and the early part of 2018 uh, as Mortgages became accessible as people believed that interest rates were coming down, um, and the the economy was really starting to realize uh, its its potential under Macri. Unfortunately, the economy by the spring, uh, about April of 2018, it, it took a turn for the worst uh, on a confluence of bad luck, bad policies, and uh, poor communication from the government. And the real estate market took, you know, really bore the brunt uh, of of the pain uh, that was brought on by both the the recession and the government's response to to quell uh, double digit inflation and and uh, run you know a currency crisis. Um, so th- this was a success story in the beginning of Macri's term. The the housing market really started to show signs of life. Uh, mortgages were basically un you know unaccessible before Macri was in office with. Uh, Christina Kirchner at the helm. And uh, unfortunately, because of the economic downturn, mortgages are now uh, pretty much off the table for the vast majority of middle class and uh, upper middle class Argentines. Before we conclude, let's look forward for a second. Alberto Fernandez from Argentina's um, largely populist Peronist movement seems poised to win this month's election in Argentina. It would seem that this would be a priority for that administration as well, given that stoking Um, consumption is often the first measure that a Peronist will turn to. What kind of solutions do you foresee, if any, that might bring about a turnaround in this sector? Um, I don't see, for example, capital controls being lifted anytime soon. It's hard to imagine a strengthening of the peso in the short term. You know, what's left in the toolkit? 
Alberto Fernandez wants to have uh, things kind of both ways. He both wants to boost things like the housing market by lowering interest rates, making uh, mortgages and, and credit more accessible to the vast majority of citizens. Uh, but at the same time, he wants to keep the peso stable, uh, which likely means uh, maintaining capital controls. Um, and he wants to, you know, boost salaries uh, and and make sure that there's more social spending, that there's less poverty going on. So, uh, for, in terms of housing, you know, his main tool is, is to lower interest rates. But at the same time, if you lower interest rates, you could boost inflation, and that could have a pretty devastating effect. Where even though you have capital controls, you start to have two parallel exchange rates, sort of the government's official exchange rate, and then uh, uh, what's called the dollar blue in Argentina, an unofficial exchange rate where people sort of say that's the real value of the peso right now. Um, so he doesn't have a lot of very good options to boost the housing market outside of lowering interest rates, but that also risks uh, a whole slew of other economic uh, ramifications. So I imagine with strong backing from unions, Alberto Fernandez will be under great pressure from very early on to do something to energize the construction sector. There is very little money available for major infrastructure projects. So it seems natural to take steps to encourage home ownership. No? Yes, absolutely, Benjamin. I think Alberto Fernandez needs to boost the housing market to appease uh, some of the very strong labor unions. One of the big victories that he's gotten in, in recent weeks is the uh, reunion between two of Argentina's largest labor unions, the CGT and the CTA. Uh, they came back there, you know, reuniting together after, uh, I believe, more than 25 years of being apart, which is a bit of a reflection of some of the divide within the broad Peronist political movement. So he's he's gotten this big notch on his belt of reuniting the big labor unions, and he needs to deliver. And, and part of that is on uh, boosting uh, industries like the housing market to get construction jobs going. And to, to do that, he has to make mortgages more accessible. It's just hard to see how credit becomes more accessible when you have 50% inflation and double-digit unemployment. So the, the, the economic backdrop to boosting the housing market is uh, is looking very dire. Unless, of course, the election of Alberto Fernandez somehow boosts confidence in the peso. And so Argentine Central Bank wouldn't require such extraordinarily high interest rates to defend the currency. I don't see that as a likely scenario, but I imagine it's possible. It's it's possible. I think in Argentina, you can never rule anything out. But what Alberto Fernandez needs to do to strengthen the currency is send a convincing sign to markets that you know, he wants to continue on some of the policy plans that Mauricio Macri had in place of labor reform, uh, pension reform, tax reform, and ensure that he can obtain the IMF's backing, IMF support uh, for his economic agenda. Um, so he has some serious hurdles to overcome in the near term and in the very near term if he does win this election. You know, he takes office in, on December 10th, and he has to prove right away that he's willing to, uh, you know, keep the economy, you know, somewhat on, in order on the right track of, you know, fiscal uh, fiscal balance, uh, keeping, you know, not, not necessarily austerity, but making sure the economy is, is balanced, that it's heading in the right direction. But he's got a really hard task ahead of him to keep the peso afloat, or uh, should, I should say, uh, keep the peso uh, steady, because he uh, he's facing serious concerns from the market that he'll implement some of the policies of his running mate, vice presidential candidate, Christina Kirchner, who was the president uh, before uh, before mockery. So there's serious concerns about what role Christina is going to have in, in Alberto's government. And, and that's probably one of the biggest risks uh, for the peso in the near term. Patrick joins us from Buenos Aires, where he's covering Argentina's economic drama and its presidential election. Thank you so much for being on our podcast. Thank you so much, Benjamin. And thankfully, our producer is a wonderful editor. That's me, Katie Hopkins. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe to the Argentina Project podcast on SoundCloud and sign up for our weekly newsletter at wilsoncenter.org slash weekly dash asado.